Hello, um, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, the UK is currently in the middle of its wettest winter since records began. So um, I've just got back in from taking the dog for a walk in an absolute torrential downpour and raging gale again. And I've just had absolutely zero stick time with the vision for what seems like weeks. Um, so anyway, today what I thought I'd do is um, do a kind of a roundup of some of the latest news and maybe products that are specific to the vision um, that, uh, that sort of caught my eye over the past couple of weeks. Um, I might make this a sort of a, an irregular series, um, you know, if there's anything new and interesting. So let's see how we go. So the first thing is um, updates from DJI, none. Uh, nothing's new, nothing's changed. I think kind of we're waiting now for news on the ground station uh, capabilities um, firmware update that was uh, that was promised. Originally it was promised for the new year, then it was put back until February. Now it's just uh, coming soon. Um, I've seen something official on Facebook from DJI that basically said, we apologize, we know you're keen for it, but our engineers won't, don't wanna release it until it's absolutely 100%. Now that's quite encouraging because there's been a couple of times lately when DJI, DJI have released something that has required a fairly immediate patch or, or some other kind of an, an update to the update. Um, so, you know, it looks like hopefully they've learned that lesson. They're not chasing a particular target date to release this and, and it'll come when it's good. Now, other than that, we haven't had any, any sort of any, anything new to, to speak of. So if your vision's flying fine, then there's no need for any updates. Um, so there's been a lot of news about gimbals um, lately. Um, I think it's a bit harsh to call this a gimbal on our on the stock vision. It's it's more like a single axis axis stabilizer. It's a servo, and you know you still get wobbly footage. And a lot of people have started to say, well, you know, I want something that's a bit more steady. And a brushless two axis gimbal will basically hold your camera in one position relatively whilst the aircraft can do all its moving in the wind and holding position in GPS and, and the gimbal will hold the camera steady and you can get some quite cinematic looking shots from that. So um, a couple of weeks ago now, maybe a bit longer now, um, the guys from Drone Expert in the Netherlands uh, launched their gimbal. Really quite interesting design. They have masses of interest. They're still quoting a six week um, lead time between placing your order and getting the gimbal out. Interesting design. It uses a like a plate and rests on the bottom of the, of the skids here. Um, um, they've been now, I think people have had them in their hands who were on the first um, sort of pre-order list for a couple of weeks. Haven't seen a massive sort of flood of videos yet, but but the ones that we have seen have shown pretty nice stable footage. Maybe a couple of issues with some jello, but I think people are looking into sort of adding some damping here and making sure they have balanced props and so on. Um, but you know, great feedback from from those pretty much. Um, 415 euros plus tax if you're in the EU plus shipping, so it's you know, quite a hefty price tag. Does come with a sort of a bonus feature of being able to use an additional secret channel on the transmitter so that you can tilt the gimbal using a slider on the back. But I'll speak more about that later because there's maybe some relevance to that as a standalone thing coming up. Um, we also just this week uh, had an announcement from Rotopixel in Toronto that they are now open the books for pre-orders for their brushless gimbal. Slightly more traditional design hanging down from the airframe. Um, both Gimbals can tilt the camera down a full 90 degrees. The Rotopixel one won't come with an additional sort of channel out of the box. Although what they have said is that their gimbal will be available with um, um, with additional um, modifications that you can buy to convert it to use with a GoPro. Um, it comes with an Alex Moss controller, which you know means that you can effectively, if you wanted to upgrade, if you moved on from the vision, put this back to stock and then take your gimbal and move it onto a different airframe. Um, they're also talking about potentially a third axis 
uh, your stabilization later down the line. That's looking really interesting. Uh, full disclosure, I've pre-ordered that one. Just, uh, it's both a price thing and also a, just a preference for the way that it's it's kind of attached. I, I, I don't know, There's something about that that I prefer. It's kind of swings and roundabouts. The other thing they've said is that it will be able to be balanced if you run a filter kit um, or add anything else um, quite easily. So, you know, that's another that's another factor. And they use a kind of a plastic, you know, a, a plastic uh, sort of holder that means that there's no no issues in, in running a, a filter if you want one. So they're currently taking pre-orders only at $389 plus shipping. It, uh, it, they're ready when they're ready. There's no um, there's no no date on that at all. Um, I would imagine it's going to be similar to drone pixel. I would imagine you're looking at a six feet lead time. Uh, there's also a player that's um, that's popped up called Gimbal24.de out of uh, I think Germany. They're based in and they've got the Ivy, the Ivy I gimbal. Currently flagged as coming soon. It looks similar-ish to the drone expert one where they're using a sort of a, a the plate on the skids. Um, but that's going to be priced in at apparently 250 euros, including tax, excluding shipping. So that's going to be quite an interesting one. We've uh, There's some video footage of it sort of in test, but it's still marked on the website as, as coming soon, even though they said last week that it would be open for pre-orders. So we don't know what's going on with that. So lots of, um, lots of third party options for gimbals. Nothing out of DJI about an official gimbal. But... You know, it's looking good um, that, that, that we haven't just got one player in that marketplace. So have a look at those. Links are going to be below uh, below the video here in the description for, for all of these if you want to, want to have a look. So I mentioned earlier about the seventh channel. Um, the transmitter has an extra channel. It's down here above the, uh, above the pot to change you from FCC to CE mode. There's actually another pot in there which... Um, if you get a, a sort of a little slider, either an official DJI one, or it can get a uh, ones that have been you know designed and made for three D printing, or just uh, other versions, there's a it kind of rocks from side to side. The idea being, as you're flying along, you just simply use a finger on the back of the controller, and you can then tilt the gimbal. Now, the problem with the Vision is, is it, it doesn't come set up to use that out of the box, but um, someone has discovered a bit of a hack. Basically, apparently, when the Phantom 2 was released, some early Phantom 2s were reporting themselves to their assistant software as visions. And so guys were saying, well, I can't, you know, I can't set up my Zenmuse Zen gimbal. What's going on? So DJI released a piece of software that you load up first, which kind of forces the, the aircraft to report itself correctly. But it's selectable, so you can choose Vision or Phantom 2. What some people have discovered is if you use that piece of software with a vision, you can basically spoof the vision into pretending it's a P2, which means that the assistant, the P2 assistant software will allow you to set up a gimbal and activate the seventh channel. So basically, um, I'll, put, I'll put a link uh, down in the, uh, in the, in the description. Uh, to a forum post on phantompilots.com. This, this, this thing, I think, has been doing the rounds. I think it originated in Germany. Um, if you want to have a look at that. People have who've done it have said it's fully reversible. You can just click the switch to, to, to get it out of, um, out of P2 mode and put it back into vision mode. Um, I haven't done it. Um, I think I'm going to wait just to see when the Rose of Pixel comes, how I feel about it and whether I want that. If you want to try it, I think my only caution would be make sure that if and when DJI release another firmware update for your vision, make sure to return your vision back to its stock settings before you apply it. I'm pretty certain that nothing too bad would happen. I suspect just the update wouldn't take. But you know, if it does and bricks it, that's a bit of a bit of an issue. So just just be careful with doing that. But that's a, a really interesting little little hack. Um, proceed at your own risk. I'm not going to say this is brilliant because I haven't done it. Other people have done it and said it's easy and it works and they're ordering the sliders and, and they're tilting their stock vision um, to their heart's content. So it might be worth looking at the, at the form link. Speaking of hacking and modding, there's been quite a lot of um, really cool, actually, really cool um, experimentation going on about increasing the range most people don't seem to have a problem with the transmitter range. What they're running out of is the downlink 
range on the Wi-Fi side of things are 2.4. And there's been some really cool experimentation going on on phantompilots.com and other uh, and other places using um, wireless repeaters, using all sorts of weird and wonderful antennas, mixing and matching, modding the range extender, adding things to the camera. Technically way above my pay grade, but all really interesting. Um, lots of soldering going on and, and, and some real kind of in the shed tinkering, which, which I think is great. But what drew my eye actually recently was that um, uh, uh, some guys called Horizon FPV antennas have suddenly sort of um, popped up out of nowhere. And what they've produced is a set of um, antennas that have been made specifically to work with the visions, both control and Wi-Fi link. Um, and they're offering them for sale. Uh, I think they're in pre-order at the moment. They're looking to start shipping in February. They design and build and test them all sort of in-house. Um, but basically, yeah, in the kit, you get the antenna and the appropriate pigtail to sort it all out. So it, it should be a no-solder upgrade, just require some, some perhaps some drilling um, to, to add the antenna. So um, I actually have a, an issue where I tend to run out for some reason. don't know why. Maybe it's the train I've like I run out of 5.8 gig control range before I tend to run out of video. So what I've done is I've ordered a, uh, a 5.8, one of their 5.8 antennas, and I'm going to test that out. First of all, by just modding the, the antenna here and leaving the division stock. And then if, if that doesn't really increase it, I'm then going to look at getting into the receiver and dropping a pigtail in and putting one of their antennas on here somewhere. Um, I'll have a bit of a play with that. Again, it's no solder. But, um, you know, if, if, if that comes to pass, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. But that's really interesting that, that this guy has produced some, some, some uh, antennas that are specifically tuned to work with this kit. Um, looking forward to seeing some results on that. Some people have been able to push, using their sort of their own homebrew mods, some people have been able to push the, uh, the, the vision out to nearly four kilometers whilst maintaining video downlink and control. There's all sorts of cool ground stations and various things people are knocking together, big repeaters, um, amplifiers, all sorts of interesting stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I thought that was that was quite interesting. Uh, worth a look at those guys. Uh, I think they're around the 24, 24, 26, 29 pound mark for the for the various. So he's produced one each for the transmitter and the range extender and then a, a sort of a, a matched pair for the uh, receiver and for the the camera antennas as well. So I thought those were my sort of pick of the of the interesting and cool things that have um, come out regarding the vision lately. Um, if anyone's uh, spotted anything else or, or there's anything uh, that, that I haven't covered that you feel I should have done, please you know stick a comment in there, subscribe. Like I said, um, I'm, I'll make this perhaps a yeah, I won't make it a regular thing. I don't think we have that much new information to sort of force a weekly, um, a weekly one or whatever. But you know, every every few weeks or when something interesting happens, um, I'll I'll put something up. Anyway, um, I hope this weather improves. It's um, it's just been appalling here. I hope you're getting some airtime where you are and you're continuing to uh, enjoy your vision. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll speak to you again soon.